This is Swim Success with Music. Yo, what up, music fam? This is Walt. This is Success with Music, and I am your music coach. And I appreciate you guys tuning in and following Success with Music. This is a podcast for singers, musicians, songwriters, beat makers, everyone who is about the music life. We welcome you to the show. And again, my name is Walt. We've been away for a few weeks here, but we're jumping back in to continue on in our music production series. And today I'm going to provide three new production techniques that I use for creating music. So I hope you enjoy today's show. Hey, before we move any further, I want to make a quick announcement. Uh, Success with Music is also is beginning an instruction course. And we're going to start in the classroom here locally, uh, providing digital audio workstation training, production, songwriting, those types of things. But we will be moving this online. So if some of you guys want to jump into our online sessions or potentially stream our local live sessions, go over to our website, which is success with music.com go to the contact area and let us know that you are interested in jumping into our swim class so yeah that'll be starting up here in the brand new year so if you're interested in music if you want to take your production to the next level and go deeper into some of the concepts that we go over in the podcast make sure you check us out at success with music.com there you can check out previous show episodes as well So for today, we're going to get into three new production techniques. So I mentioned in the previous episode that some of the techniques that I'm bringing to you today, they are not laws of music. These things that I'm going to show you today are not things you have to do as a musician or a music creator or beat maker, that type of thing. But these are some things that may give you ideas as to how to go about your personal production. So I believe that seeing how other people go about things, how their workflow is, it just gives you new ideas for what you're doing. And my hope is that you can take what's being said and integrate it into your existing style or setup. Similar to the previous episode, I'm going to play a piece of music that I created. It's a very short piece of music. As I after I play through this little segment, I'm going to go back and I'm going to deconstruct it and give you some insight into Three things I did here. Now, as you're listening, please make sure that you do not get hung up on the genre. Quite frankly, I'm not sure what kind of genre it is that you're going to hear. I just threw together a a quick idea to go through some concepts. So, again, don't think about this as a how to for a certain music genre. I don't care what genre you produce or write or sing in. It could be country, rock, pop, electronic trap what i I don't even care again focus on the concepts all right so let's start from the beginning here i'm going to play this track for you and we're going to go back and talk about a few things all right here we go All right, so there's the piece there. Um, And again, this is a really rough track. Uh, It has not been, I think, properly mixed, and most certainly it has not been mastered. Um, But again, this is not the the episode for that. And we can even talk about that in uh, maybe an upcoming uh, episode for production techniques. And if you're not familiar with the term, you can go, uh, go look it up, mixing and mastering. That's more at the end stages for your music. We're at the beginning where we are creating the idea. And again, I want to look at some building blocks for how I create some of my tracks. Okay, first, 
I'm going to solo this particular track that played along with everything else that you heard. And I want to go and make a few comments about it. But I'm going to isolate this one track within this little segment to give you some more information. So let me play it for you. That sound is playing throughout the entire music segment. Let me put the all the other instruments back in. See if you can pick it out. It's kind of obvious now, right? Okay, so what's happening there is I am using this kind of uh, airy pad sound or this atmospheric sound uh, in, in the background, I like to use instruments like that to give some like a backdrop for all the other instruments. And I think it fills in the space to where the music sounds a bit fuller. Now, specifically, I am using what they call in music theory an interval. An interval is the distance between one note and and another. So I'm using an interval. So in other words, I'm using two notes for that pad or that atmospheric sound here in this music segment. Let me play it for you one more time. I'm going to isolate it. Here it is. Okay, now this sound, I will admit it does have some uh, additional things in there to kind of give it more texture and more depth, but I'm really just playing two notes, an interval, and actually this is a fifth, and uh, if you studied music theory, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. If you have not studied music theory, all I'm doing is playing a number one note, and I'm going up to the number five note in a particular scale, and that gives me my fifth, so let me play it for you. So I'm playing, this is the first note. And then the next note is up here. And again, there's a lot of kind of undertones in this particular patch or sound, but that's what's happening. You have this note, which is a D, and this note, which is an A. So I'm playing them together. So again, these notes are five spaces apart, or it's a, it's, it's a fifth. So this is playing throughout. I like to use this in a lot of my tracks uh, as a backdrop, as I mentioned. I, I believe it gives it more depth, more meat, and more interest. You can even pull this sound way, way, way down in the overall mixture of things or in the mix, and I think it still will have the intended effect to create just a backdrop for the rest of the sound. So let me play the entire music segment for you one more time and again you can hear it right here is still there Way back in the mix. So at the very end, you can kind of hear it trail off there. It's there throughout the mix. So especially when all the other music kind of comes in, uh, when the, I guess the track kind of goes to that next stage and, um, you know, volume and dynamics, it's still there, that interval sound. And it's further in the back because of the other instruments uh, there present. But again, I feel like he just gives it a full bodied sound. So the point being is that if you're creating um, slower tracks or faster tracks, I guess in this instance, play around with using intervals in the background. You don't need like full complicated chords. You can just take two notes. I use a fifth in this example, and you can use maybe a pad sound or a string sound or an atmospheric sound or or what have you. I just choose to use something that kind of stretches out and that can um, hang on and be sustained over time without it cutting through too much. Now, one more note, kind of the bonus tip here. If you're not going to use a fifth, I believe another alternative to a fifth is a fourth. 
So you can use an E and an A. So the distance between an E and an A, just kind of take this at face value here. A natural E and a natural A is this. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, that sounds just like the other one. Well, the other one, which is a fifth, the notes are a little farther further pot, p- apart. Let me play the fifth for you. That's the fifth. But as an alternative, I believe you can play a fourth. I'll play it. And I kind of like the fourth more because it adds a bit more character as I'm using the number two note in, in this instance, in the minor scale of D. If I'm losing you, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't feel bad about it. Just understand that you can just play around with your, your instrumentation and just try to pick out two notes on uh, your keyboard or on your MIDI controller and hold them down to see what kind of combination will work best. I believe if you use too many notes, your track may get a bit complicated and complex and that may take away from it. So a fifth or a fourth, I believe, is just enough to fill in space without potentially interfere, interfering with your other instrumentation. All right, let's move on to our next point here. I wanna talk about an instrument I guess it's kind of an instrument, but I use a collection of sounds for somewhat of a melody in this track. Now, if you're not familiar with the the phrase melody, I'm sure most of you've heard melody, but I'll give you my definition. It's the most singable or recognizable part of a tune. So in this particular tune, there are kick drums and there's different percussion things going on. There's like a bass that drops in like a a synth bass, but I've used a certain sound that is distinct, repetitive and something that your ear kind of catches on to. Let me play the track again. See if you can pick out the melody in this song. And this is kind of a trick question and I'll tell you why, but let me play it for you. Here we go. All right, let me stop right there. Where's the melody in this song? Or what's acting as the singable part of the song? Well, let me isolate the sound for you and I'll tell you what it is. All right, hear it? Here it is. I'll play it for you so you can hear it. That is, in my mind, the melody in this song. Now, I mentioned the words singable. Is that really a singable thing? I guess in no. What I've done in this instance, I used a a layering effect to where I have like a cowbell in there, like this air sound and some other kind of percussive instrument. And that percussive instrument, I assigned it uh, chromatic notes on my keyboard. So in other words... Um, a cowbell and these other percussive sounds uh, can play like a key on a piano, essentially. And so because that is the case, I can then go through a series of notes and it feels it seems like it has a tune to it or something that you can kind of whistle to or play along with. And it's in a certain key. So. That is the melody in this instance. The thing I want to bring out here is what I just alluded to. I would like to challenge you as a musician and a producer and a beat maker. Sure, you can always use something very clear and easy like a guitar or a lead synth or a piano to or some other instrument, flute, saxophone. You can use those things to have a a melody, but what I did in this instance, I used something atypical to create a melody. So in other words, I used sounds and I tuned those sounds to where they stood in for the place of a melody. So the point is, I like to try to use things that are not typical to create my melody. And as a result, the song itself will have just a slightly 
different appeal. If I just put like a piano in